Good morning. I hate to be kind of a downer, but uh, for today, it's a little bit of a difficult morning for Jan and me. Um, we said goodbye to our, our Hamlet, our big old lovable, comical, gentle soul, uh, faithful companion of 16 years. And so, um, the loss is palpable. <laughs> um, and my emotions are pretty raw. <sighs> Yet, through the grace of God, which we're going to hear a lot about today, um, I had read this little proverb of sorts um, about fall, the season of fall. And it went something like this, short, uh, if you will, that fall is that time of year when the trees show us how lovely it is to let go of things. And so I think it's true, it's always both and for us as Lutherans, but true uh, in letting go, that we make room for whatever God is bringing next. And so for this community in particular, I lift up uh, the old play structure, right, that is uh, being laid to rest. <laughs> and the new one is partially in place and there's more that's uh, growing uh, in from that. And even our old sign, I'm not sure when that will be installed, but we have the new sign that you've seen in the narthex. And so all of those making way for new, right? That we can uh, better include Calico and Cora Luke's and um, Lutheran Advoc Advocacy Ministry in that new signage. And so we're pr I'm pretty excited about that. For us, it's kind of how we roll, right? Uh, we know best about death and resurrection and that those are always held together. I wanna give an update on the vision process, right? So the vision, I'm gonna name it. We voted on this and adopted it um, back in May. And it is, St. Paul is a hub for a variety of ministries in a central learning space, teaching people to live their faith in many ministry opportunities. The worship experience in this beautiful sacred space nurtures us as a community so that we can be connected to many community outreach and social justice activities. So enlightened by that vision, uh, the ad hoc team that was created uh, is formulating questions to help us discern, right, where God is calling us today and where that intersects with our passions. And so while we're working on that, um, all who want to give their input will have the opportunity. That first one question survey went out asking you if, how you wanted to engage. And many of you responded and you'll still have a chance to, uh, to uh, plug in, but you'll have an option for a survey or a small group or even one-on-ones. And so if you are not sure if you answered that, connect with Deb. Uh, who is keeping track of that uh, diligently. And then from that information, we will set some goals for the next year or more. Um, and quite simply, the passions that get expressed will get lived out with volunteers through you or through paid staff or some combination thereof which means that we'll need to let go of some of the things maybe that we don't have a concerted effort uh, to, to do, or that we uh, agree to spend some of our piggy bank money and uh, beef things up, meaning maybe some uh, additional paid staff. So that's what we're hoping to glean from that in a nutshell of how do we, how do we navigate out of this still really weird COVID time. Because as I speak, I know that there are those who couldn't be here today who said, I'll be tuning in online, so welcome. And we have a whole host of people online that we still don't know really how to reach out to other than this. <laughs> so we're thankful that we are able to get uh, the good news out there. And uh, should those people desire to connect with us, we would love to explore that. In the meantime, let us be in fervent prayer listening for the Spirit's direction 
and giving thanks for all that we do sharing God's boundless love. Like yesterday um, was God's work, our hands, which I'm sorry to have missed, um, but there were already pictures in the, the welcome center as you entered, and I look forward to hearing more about uh, our service at Luther House and at uh, Hope Works. Um, also a part of God's work, our hands today, was the invitation to bring non-perishable food for the storehouse. Um, no worries if you missed the memo. Uh, there are always bins in that welcome center area. And when those get filled, the, we call, call the storehouse and they come and pick that up. Um, so it's always there because every day really is God's work, our hands. And today is rally day. We have not had a rally day in a number of years because of COVID, but be sure to stay for the potluck. Even if you didn't bring a dish, there is always plenty. It's kind of like stone soup, right? Um, be sure to stop. Uh, we don't have a place to update all your information yet. We didn't quite get there, but we are taking photos for a new directory. So I invite you to stop and see Omar and my Jan and others who are right out as you came out in the narthex. Um, and if it's a uh, big line, come down the hall and come back a little bit later. We'll see how all that works out. Um, and, and that is for everyone, right? If you're here, you're a part of us, right? You don't have to be, quote, a member to be photographed in our directory. We just wanna be in touch with you and having a picture is very helpful. If you want to find out about being uh, officially on the books at St. Paul, we'd love to have more conversation with you. And a huge thank you uh, to Dylan and Hunter who are kind of making their way around. They probably have the, the ovens firing up outside as we speak uh, that will be baking our pizza for our gathering following this. So again, be sure to thank them. Uh, Dylan and Hunter Strait are part of our congregation and so we are thrilled that they were willing to come and uh, uh, make some pizza for us. So come and enjoy that. And one last announcement. As we um, start to prepare, sounds crazy for Advent, which won't be until November, but we have some fun stuff. There are four posters with those Advent themes. There's a poster in the back and you'll see there's lots of white space ready for you to add your color. So throughout the next month or so, we hope that you'll uh, stop by. Well, uh, right now it's set up in the fellowship hall, but that is a kind of a mobile station that will, coloring station. So come and add your color and then you'll see it come together during Advent. Thank you to the visual choir. Whew, okay. Are there any other announcements for today? All right. I invite us to rise as we sing our gathering hymn, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk on the way. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge to stand on the journey. Your future Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points you the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And today we begin a new setting, not new to us, but a different setting, setting five. And you'll note that we have uh, to, in, I guess, ingrain in us that this Kyrie can be spoken or chanted. This morning, albeit the music in there, we will speak it. So, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. And together we sing the canticle. pray. O God, overflowing with mercy and compassion, you lead back to yourself all those who go astray. Preserve your people in your loving care that we may reject whatever is contrary to you and may follow all things that sustain our life in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
The first reading today is from Exodus chapter 32. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast themselves in an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that I may wrath, so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them. And you I will make a great nation. But Moses employed the Lord, his God, and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was evil intent that their God brought them out and killed them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord relented concerning the disaster that the Lord planned for the chosen people. Word of God, word of life. We will speak Psalm 51 responsively. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Remove my, son, my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Our second reading is from 1 Timothy chapter 1. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service. Even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, a man of violence, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ mighty, might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the sovereign of ages, immortal, invisible, and the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of God, word of life. Thanks, Jesus.
Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling, saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after that one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost." Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having 10 silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, invite you to be seated. First, a little bit about God's work, our hands. And then we'll make a turn to our lectionary readings for today. God's work, our hands, began in 2013 when we, as the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, celebrated our 25th anniversary. That means we, as a denomination, are nearly 40 years old. We're pretty young. And we are about 3 million strong with over 8,000 congregations. We also have six full communion partnerships. And if you're not sure what that means, that means that we hold in common some core beliefs about our faith, like how we look at the sacraments and how we believe in the authority of Scripture. And those partnerships are with a lot of our mainline denominations that we see around us. The Presbyterian Church USA, the Reformed Church in America, the United Church of Christ, the Episcopal Church, the United Methodist Church, and the lesser known for us, the Moravian Church. And we continue to make inroads with the Catholic and the African Methodist Episcopal Churches. So, I don't know about you, but I love our collaboration. Um, we're also connected with hundreds of companion synods, like ours in Madagascar, um, all over the globe, Africa, Asia, Europe, Middle East, Latin America, and the Caribbean. Celebrating church in the larger sense through these connections I think is part of what God's work, our hands, is all about. And, like yesterday, it's a chance to engage in service with our local community. An opportunity, right, to act out one of our most basic convictions as Lutherans. That all of life, right, everything that we do, every act of service in every corner of life flows freely from a living, daring confidence in God's grace. So although we work every day to make our community a better place, this annual event is a chance to really celebrate what God is doing all around us and through us. Now, I'm not so... Uh, rose-colored uh, glass wearing as to think that one, a one day of service is going to fix all of the world's problems. However, each act is a powerful sign of God's grace to all who are touched by them. 
And then when I begin to imagine the church in the broader sense that I just shared, similar actions taking place in 8,000 churches on a daily basis, right? Plus all the communities working to share God's love throughout the world. Now that's collaborative difference making. And this grace that we talk about here, living through that grace, is some of what our scripture passages are expressing today. In particular, while feeling a little lost. In Exodus, God's people as a whole community felt lost, right? Moses had gone up to Mount Sinai to receive the stone tablets of God's covenant with them. And one might think that would take a few days at most, right? But 40 days later, Moses finally returns. And you can only imagine those at the base of that mountain, what they did after 40 days. They got a little impatient, right? They, in their waiting, felt lost, and so they created a golden calf, right? This human-made thing that they thought would, but it did not, appease God. Instead, it made God angry. But Moses is bold to remind God of God's mercy. And what does God do? God relents, changes God's mind. That is grace. In Timothy, it was Paul who felt lost. He not only didn't believe, but he persecuted others of faith. Somehow, by the grace of God, Paul sees with a new perspective and joins the community of believers. That's amazing grace. And in Luke, where we'll spend a little bit more time, in Luke, we get two of three stories in a row about being lost and then being found. A lost sheep and a lost coin, and a lost or prodigal son. And we get that third story typically during Lent. But for today, it's noteworthy that these parables are offered to the religious folk, right, who were grumbling or grieving or distracted in some way about how Jesus moved in their world. He was eating with sinners. People, grace is grace is grace is grace, right? Jesus chose those distracted people to hear about grace again. And maybe not just receiving it, but also giving it. Because, of course, God would, but Jesus asks the crowd, which of you, which of you would leave 99 sheep in the wilderness that is still in danger and go and seek that one that was lost? Right? The shepherd had one job. One job to keep track of the sheep all of them, and somehow the shepherd lost one. And the tone of things is that the sheep didn't just wander off, but the shepherd who was responsible for it was somehow distracted and lost it. And so he risks leaving the 99 to find the one. Is one worth the risk of the other 99? In our parable, it's a resounding yes, right? The shepherd rejoices, he throws a party, 
the sheep returned into the fold. Thanks be to God. And then, as if one parable wasn't enough to talk about grace, Jesus asks the crowd, which one of you turns your house upside down for hours to find a single coin? In this case, it's certain that on the account of some distraction, the woman loses the coin. There's no chance of it wandering off. Strangely, when she finds it, she spends more than it's worth celebrating with her friends. Friends, I suspect, or maybe I'm projecting, that we've all come today with all manner of distractedness. Grief at the loss of a loved one or a dear furry family member. Grief at a changing music ministry here at St. Paul. I know the choir had been preparing and was excited to offer an anthem, but instead we find ourselves wrapping our heads around regrouping again. I can't help but to feel that this is part of a larger, much larger transformation. And not only for us, but for the whole of Christianity, right? And it's pretty easy to feel like we are the lost sheep. God, please come find us. What's going on? But I wonder, humor me today. I wonder, wonder with me today, if we are not the lost sheep, but the distracted ones, missing how Jesus is moving in this world. I don't have all the answers, but here are two things that I know. Every time we lament that there are so few littles among us, thank you, Noah, and grown-up littles of Gabriel and Ritzy and Rindra and Radu, but every time we lament that there are so few littles among us, I can't help but to think of the 40 littles and their families who are here not on Sunday morning, like the good old days. But here they are in our care, and not just for a couple of hours on Sunday morning, but upwards of 40 hours each week. I'm pretty sure Marisol would welcome your involvement. And does that mean a background check? Yes. We want to keep them and you safe. But don't let that keep you from getting involved. I swear, Carmen, we are going to fix, we're going to figure out the, uh, your multiple location and only doing it once. And tomorrow, we are restarting chapel time after two and a half years of hiatus. So if you want to come read a book or simply get to know uh, about 10 littles and their teachers, please come. Most Mondays, check the calendar from 11 to 11.30-ish. The other thing that I know is that El Faro, has anyone heard? I've mentioned it before, El Faro is a beautiful youth choir connected to Coro Lux, who happens to be our choir in our ensemble in residence, right? They're connected, they're partners with us. They use this space throughout the week. And El Faro has started their second season. And I had the pure joy of hearing them rehearse this past Thursday evening right in our choir room, this side, choir room. I 
I noticed as I left that their parents were all parked in the shade of the building right outside the door. And I thought to myself, what would it look like if we showed up and welcomed them with a cold cup of water? In the midst of our distractions, and believe me, I'm not discounting the hard work of some of those distractions, like grief, but in the midst of our distractions, God is moving in amazing ways. There's incredible ministry right at our doorstep and within our own building. Good people of God, our lives are forever changed by the grace of God. And God working through us means that we are church together for the sake of the world, no matter what it looks like. Amen? That was pretty quiet. No matter what it looks like, because it's changing, whether we accept it or walk into it, Happily, it's changing. So, amazing grace. Trusting God at work in and among us, we raise our hearts and voices in prayer for the needs of the world. For your work in the church, we give thanks. Plant and tend relationships among faith communities that in faithful listening, speech, and actions, our hands work to bear fruit for the sake of all in need. 
God of grace, we pray. For your work in creation, we give thanks. Sustain peoples and places affected by climate change, ecological devastation, and natural disaster. Prosper the work of creation care ministries locally and globally that with our minds and hearts opened, our hands work to loving care for the earth, God of life, we pray. For your work among nations, we give thanks. Direct leaders in paths of honest service, that both their work, words and actions are carried out on behalf of those whom they serve. God of righteousness, we pray. For your work in places of need, we give thanks. Sustain all who are wearied by unemployment or lack of adequate food or housing, that we may advocate for relief and just policy. Bring healing to all those who are sick through the skillful hands of compassionate hearts of physicians, nurses, therapists, and caregivers. God of restoration, we pray. For your work in our neighborhoods, towns, and cities, we give thanks. Guide our common life together so that children, youth, and adults of all ages flourish. Teach us to listen attentively to our neighbors, that any new endeavors consider those who may be left out or underserved. God of wisdom, we pray. For your work in worshiping communities, we give thanks. Bless the service projects of this day and throughout the year. Foster deeper connections among those who serve and a spirit of accompaniment as we work alongside those in our community. Strengthen our faith that we trust God moving in and among us. God of love, we pray. Hear us when we call. For your work among those who came before us, we give thanks. We remember those who have died and are held forever in your loving hands. Hold us in your presence now and always. God of heaven and earth, hear us. Receive these and all of our prayers, gracious God. We pray in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also Let us share a sign of peace with those worshiping online and with one another.
Thank you, Shannon, for a fun offering. I invite you to rise. We pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make these gifts a banquet of blessing make, and making us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets the table for all. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also. Lift up your hearts. Be with the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And together, we sing the prayer our Savior taught us. Christ invites you to this table, come, taste, and see. I invite you to be seated as those who are choosing to remain in the pew for communion may prepare their elements, and then we will uh, get set up for uh, others who want to come forward.
the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. I invite the rest of us to come forward as we set up our two stations. We pray, God of abundant life, or excuse me, God. You got it. Uh, Do you want me to do it? Yeah. <laughs> he didn't make it large print for himself. <laughs> Let me get that for you. We pray, God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. 
Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And this is going to be a lot of up and down, but I'm going to ask you to go ahead and be seated, and I'm going to invite those who are part of the visitation team, so Kay and Julie and Diane and Sharon Howard, come on up. We'll stand by the baptismal font. That's a good place to go. You know, we have continued um, to be creative, right, in how we uh, care for our uh, members and non-members, extended uh, beyond that, whether they're at home or in the hospital or uh, care facility. And so we've continued to reach out to them when we couldn't at all. It was via cards and phone calls. And now we're able to make some actual visits, bringing communion. Mm -hmm. And so I want to lift up a thank you uh, to each of you and all of us. Um, we've noticed pleasantly that more of the home communion or the, the little communion kits might be making their way out to others who might be sharing it, and that's fantastic. So however we can continue to share the grace of God is just beautiful. But we want to especially offer this uh, blessing, which we haven't done for right another two and a half years, another thing that we're kind of uh, instituting again, bringing forward, is our blessing on these hands who will take it out and those hands who will receive it. So... Pray with me, and if you want from a distance to put your uh, laying on of hands on one another, we can do that. So gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick, homebound, and imprisoned. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament, and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you. And while I'm standing at the baptismal font, I invite us all to rise. As a part of our God's work, our hands, there's this affirmation of Christian vocation that we thought was beautiful because we all have different niches uh, that we fill, and those are ever-changing and evolving. And so... Siblings in Christ, both our work and our rest are in God. Will you endeavor to pattern your life on the Lord Jesus Christ in gratitude to God and in service to others at morning and evening, at work and at play, and all the days of your life? Almighty God, by the power of your spirit, you have knit us, your servants, into the one body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Look with favor upon us in our commitment to serve in Christ's name. Give us courage, patience, and vision, and strengthen us all in our Christian vocation of witness to the world and of service to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, be sent with these uh, words of benediction. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. We are sent singing to a familiar tune, but different words. God's work our hands to the tune of all uh, um, earth and all stars. Thank you.
And before that final blessing, I invite you to make your way either to have your picture taken or down the way as we get set up for our potluck. Please come and once we kind of all get in there, I'll offer a prayer of thanksgiving. Go in peace with Christ beside you. Thanks. Thanks.